Hey everybody, Matumbo here. Welcome back. We are playing some more Historic on Magic Arena, and today we have a really, really fun deck. This deck started as something completely different. Uh, it's something that we honestly we had a dream about, and then we built it, and the deck was horrible, and then we just played about 14 different iterations of the deck, and we landed on this. So this is completely not what we were trying to do initially, but we got to this point, and I'm kind of excited about it because this deck, um, based on the uh, couple games that we played before we start recording these games, um, went awesome. I haven't lost yet. So we're going to kind of hope to keep that going. And before we hop into the, into the deck, as always, I just want to remind everybody real quickly to hit that like button, hit that uh, bell notification icon to be notified when the videos go live, Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment down. And we do have another giveaway coming up at 2,500 subscribers, which is less than 200 away. So uh, most of you guys that watch these videos are not subscribed. So just hit that subscribe button, and then you can be part of the amazing giveaway that we're about to do. Also, um, there are some new links, uh, as always. Uh, there is the main, the main link that I want to let you guys know about is the Discord channel. So... Check out all the links below, but mainly check out the Discord channel because I want to hear from you guys. So with that being said, let's hop into today's deck. We are calling it Rampaging Right because we uh, always like some good alliteration. So we stumble on this card, obviously, in that crazy, you know, dream state that we were in. Um, this is one of the cards that we initially started with. So um, Hidetsugu's second right. Four mana instant, if target player has exactly 10 life, this is going to deal 10 damage to that player. So if we can get our opponent down to 10 life, we are going to hit them for 10 for four mana. And that's really what we are just trying to do. We're trying to get them to 10, and then we are going to point this at them and hope they die. So we need to make sure that there is interaction in our deck. We need to make sure that we can deal damage to them in different increments. And we also need to make sure that they can't gain life in order to negate this effect of being at 10 life. All right, so let's just go over the cards real quick. Um, we do have um, we do have our one drop. So we have all seed of life's bounty. This is a life linker. This gains um, this. We can sack it to give a creature protection from a certain color. So that's really what you're going to see here. The, the commonality of the one drops is both of the one drops are going to give the ability to give our creatures protection from a certain color. The, the life linking 1-1 one, one body on this guy is just a little bit of a bonus. So same for God's Willing, one mana, uh, creature gets protection from a color, but we get to scry. So these are ultimately almost the same card. Now we do have a little bit of dis uh, disruption here. So we have three copies of Thalia because we want to, you know, make them stumble a little bit. We're going to make non-creature spells cost one more to cast. Now obviously this does slightly hurt us, but early on if we can just kind of just keep them off tempo... This is going to benefit us more because we can kind of control the game in a way that uh, in a way where we slow it down a little bit, but we're still kind of like pinging it for damage because we have a lot of things that are really, really small uh, cast uh, cost. And then by the time they're ready to actually cast something, it's going to be an extra turn. Maybe they don't have the land for their four drop because they need five now. So that's what we're really hoping for. Uh, same kind of goes with Tithe Taker. This is almost the same thing, but this just prevents <clears throat> interaction on our turn by adding by making spells cost one more. So if they're trying to, you know, uh, play a removal spell on our turn while we're attacking, it's going to cost one more. If they're trying to cast anything with flash, you know, like the omens and stuff, it's going to cost one more. And then on the plus side, if this, if this dies, we're going to get a one one flyer out of it. So that is going to help again the process of getting them down to ten. We have four lightning strikes. Um, this is really the most efficient uh, three damage spell right now that can target a player uh, in Historic since we don't have access to Lightning Bolt as of right now. Now, let's go over our three drops. Now, Lava Brink Venturer. This is honestly probably one of the most underrated cards in Akoria. This, um, he's a three mana, three, three. When he comes into play, you choose odd or even. And he has protection from each converted mana cost of the chosen value. So if you come into play, you name Odd, and you're playing against like a Simic deck, they're not going to be able to play with their Grazers. They're not going to be able to block with their Uros. Um, they're not going to be able to block with their Goloses. 
Um, you know, it's just, again, you get the idea. They, they can't deafen and clarion this away. This can't be Teferi'd away if you name it on. Um, if you're playing, I mean, there, again, there's just so many different cards of this stops. Um, just by naming odd. And again, with even as well. So you really just want to figure out what you're playing against and then name that. Again, this is really underrated. Uh, Bone Cruncher Giant, because again, it's two damage. We can direct it right at our opponent. And then he's also a 4-3 body for three. And then if they try to target him, we're going to be dealing damage straight to their face as well. And then here's where the uh, anti-life gain comes in. We have uh, th uh, four Rampaging Ferocidons, because three mana, three, three with Menace is already really busted. But then on top of it, he also says players can't gain life. And then he also says whenever another creature enters the battlefield, this does one damage to that person. So if we have one or, one or two of these in play, they're just going to be taking multiple damage to play creatures. And then same goes with Tybalt. Um, opponents can't gain life. And then we can minus two him to make one, one creatures that when they die, they deal one damage to any target. So we have the ability to deal damage in increments of one, twos, and threes. So those one, twos, and threes will add up really quickly, and we're going to get them to 10. And then again, we're just going to tap four mana and end the game instantly. So uh, couple that with uh, 24 land. Um, you can see them here. We just got four of each of the uh, shock, check, and temples, and then six of each of the basics. Uh, it's pretty uh, even cast uh, among red and white cards. Um, the cards are kind of equally important. All right. So with that being said, we are going to hop into the gameplay. Again, I told you we played some games before this and went really, really, really well. And I hope we just ride this out. So, all right, let's get into the gameplay. We will talk about what we like in the wrap-up, and we will see you guys soon. All right, guys. Well, good morning. Good morning. Uh, as you can see, we're moving the camera down here to the bottom right. Uh, we're going to give it. We're going to give this a shot for this video. So this <laughs> this deck is not what we were planning on playing. Um, didn't really cover that in the intro video, but uh, we, we were going to be playing another deck today, but I kind of woke up uh, with this like crazy dream in my in my mind. Like seriously, I woke up thinking about this deck and uh, it started as one thing and then it morphed into this deck and I'm kind of happy that it actually like turned into what this is because... Yeah, so this this deck started as like the memeiest of meme decks. Um, okay, well, eventually get them really good with uh, if we could draw a land though. Oh, please block. Just need them not to have the freaking lion, but they always have the lion. Bishop of Wings, okay. Please give me a land deck. Just one time. Thank you. All right, so let's see what their deck can do without life gain. Yep. You, can, you guys can kind of see where this is going, so we just have to uh, gracefully get them down to uh, to ten life. Um. Don't think we attack here. 
Might be able to kill them next turn if they actually play any creatures. Okay. Alright, so we can't kill them right now, but what we can do is we can give this pro white. And we're going to hope for a block on this Thalia. Okay. And then we just wait for them to play a creature, and then the game uh, is going to be over. Oh, man. Good game. They never know what hit them. They just don't know how they lost right there, right? Oh, man. That feels really good. <laughs> Guys, we're going into game two. We had a new thing we did yesterday for the stream. So we're gonna bring it to YouTube. As you know, in game two, we talk about what? Hydrating? So it's time to hydrate. Boom. Hydrate. Let's do it. Time to hydrate. Phone is lighting up. Eco. All right, well. Hmm. This seems like an okay hand. This is not an optimal hand, obviously, but I would prefer to see a land probably on my first draw that's not a temple. Because I'd really like to play on curve, not off curve. So we can... We can life's bounty on one, and but then turn to... Play the tap land that disables us being able to play bone crusher giant or st stomp really um really works out the same right teamer all right what kind of teamer deck are you playing over there oh we're playing a uh Playing a your mana screw teamer deck. We're sorry about that. You are not going to like us. I don't want that. You don't want to block? You probably scoop. Probably scoop. Oh, okay, drew land. Well, we uh, cannot kill that, unfortunately. Uh, let's actually play this. All right, so now we have to start planning for how we're gonna deal uh, damage in to get him into the ten range. So we have five here. Um, I know how crazy that looks, but again, all right, so we're gonna try to bait out something crazy here. He's got a lot of mana, so we have to ensure that he doesn't. He's de he's developed pretty nice for getting stuck on on lands, right? What does he name? Is there any way we lose from this from this position? Risen Reef, okay. 
You gotta tap both your lands to play that Risen Reef. You have a blue mana floating. Right? Straight to the dome? Yep. <laughs> second right. Uh, second right to the face is more like it, right? Paying, paying four mana to deal 10 damage is really, really, really unfair. And I know there is a lot of setup that you have to do for it, but I feel like just concentrating on, on just whittling them down and hitting it for 10, making sure that you can deal a combination of 10 damage to them. It's not really hard to do. Um, opponent's going first. Well, we're going to... We're going to keep this. These Lava Brink Venturers are really, really good. This is definitely one of the sleeper cards from this set. All right, well. Maybe we draw a uh, untapped land. Oh, we're, we got to kill the hell out of that thing, right? No, no, deck. I don't think you. I don't think you heard me. I don't think you heard me correctly. I said an untapped land. All right, so we are going to say odd. Maybe there's a world where he attacks in on purpose to pump up the knight. Okie doke. You do you, buddy. Don't know why you would do that. Yep. Yeah, again, these um, these ventures are just super overpowered. They look a little inconspicuous, but being able to... Alright, well, lifelink is a relic. You ain't blocking. So we really just need to let them deal two damage to themselves, right? Maybe they just go creature, creature. Humans get plus one, plus one. Okay. And... Make you have something. Yep. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that was going to be uh, too good for you. Plus, he stumbled on land, so... This, this deck, um, so it started off as a um, Axis of Mortality deck. Simpleton. So Axis of Mortality, being able to switch your life total with somebody into a uh, the angel that lets you, that makes your life total 10 from the graveyard, and then uh, Hidetsugu's second right. So we're going to we're going to keep this. This is not a great draw. Alright. Fabled Passage into... What color do we want to see? Honestly, mono white, I think. I think mono white is probably our best matchup. But he'll probably get a green or a black. Red, okay. Red red what? Red what? Well, let's attack before we do anything. Actually we 
can't do anything anyway. Since the bolt costs four. Red green? Red blue. Oh, okay. I like it. I like it. So he's missed a couple land drops. Okie doke. And he's he's definitely keeping keeping pace with us. And those are probably the least threatening creatures in his deck too. Just two two hasters with flying. Um Okay, well, he's gonna block. We're gonna we're gonna give this thing pro red. And then next turn, we're gonna be at the stage where we decide how much damage we want to come in with. That's really good. Okay. This is the other side of the deck. The deck uh, that just goes wide and gets you. But again, he stum he stumbled on mana, so it's the story of our story of our, our games today. Yeah, so this this deck just as we were brewing it, this was not supposed to be the video today. Uh, I actually already had the deck built for the video today. Um, but it was just, this deck was just like eating at the back of my mind. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know if you ever experienced that sometimes where you're just like, man, I had a great idea for a deck. I really got to like hash this out get it to work. Um, but then this is one of those instances where it's just like, there was just too much going on. You know, and it went from a, it went from like like a, it went from a, um, axis axis of mortality angel, uh, Hidetsugu deck to a, um, oh, what's that card? Um, Star of Extinction with the four three that when he takes damage you can redirect it to a person. So there was just a lot of. Um, God, this guy has menace. He's really good. All right, we're gonna keep it. I know we already have one, but this guy's just playing. Are you gonna hide behind us to fairy now? They always hide behind to fairy. Last casket. Why is that a card? F it. Maybe you should have played the Ferocidon there. Rossadon actually prevents the life gain. Oh, and he's playing Esper. So we're about to get uh, Kayad. Auto Erasure, okay. Lightning Strike. God's Willing. All right, well, let's see. He 
You want a wrath, we're gonna draw a card. Take one. Know if I like that. <clears throat> well, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to deal him damage. Oh, well, you're not life Lincoln. You do know that. Okay. The dream is alive, guys. Dream is alive. Ugh, we need him to take two damage somehow. He needs to shock something in. He needs to shock something in. Remember, lifelink doesn't work, buddy. That was when you needed a shock. So he's going to play his Yorian and blink his glass casket that's on his Tithe Taker. And then take our Rampaging Ferocidon and then we just lose, right? Oh, wait, 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 wait. He's going to take two damage from this. Oh. Oh, this is amazing. This is, oh my God. Wh why did you do that? Oh. Oh my God. And we, I don't even know what song to sing right now, right? This is just like, we're just going to get up, right? Boom. What can you do? Oh, man. <laughs> why would you play why would you play main phase omen there? Oh my god. Oh my. All right, we got time for one more, right? Oh man, that was some crazy craziness. Oh, man. And I'm actually kind of excited for our our deck tomorrow as well. Which was going to be our deck today. We're going to keep this. That last game just proves how how powerful life gain prevention can be. And I totally understand why uh, Rampaging Ferocidon was banned in standard at one point. So... Let's go ahead and stomp that. Let's get in. All right, well. Let's 
go ahead and kill that and get in. This is like obviously his best night. This and worthy night. All right, so here I'm fully expecting him to flash in his 3 1. No. I'm still kind of expecting him to flash it in. Maybe just this, this makes black, right? Yeah. That's it, huh? All right. Oh, man. So I'm pretty sure that was the same night player that we played from earlier. Um, I'm like 90%. The name looked familiar, and I know we played a Knight's deck, so. Um, well, we're going to keep this. We definitely need, definitely need a land. Okay, what islands are those? What islands are those? Are we playing a permission control deck? What are we playing? Syncopate, okay. Syncopate? What the hell are you doing over there with syncopate? Oh. This will... Okay. Syncopate is a very interesting card to see. Alright, so he's just playing what looks like an Azor... as to be an Azorius control deck. Okay, no, no Teferi, so that's good. And we are going ahead, we're going to go ahead and... Yeah, I guess we play this, right? Revitalize. This guy's playing all the cards that we want to be playing in another deck. What do we got here? Teferi? Big Teferi? Oh, man. Let's get settled, right? No? I know we're playing right into his wrath, but this is eight damage. Then we have nine on the board. Oh, do we just are we just gonna play into this settle? Really works out the same. So he has to wrath here, pretty sure. Yeah, so he just has to wrath. Yeah, good game, good game. Oh man, okay. Super impressed with this deck. This deck is really, really sweet. All right, guys, welcome to the wrap up. So we, like I was hoping, we killed this. We went seven and zero in games. We played um, 
we played the same knights person twice i went back and verified that um and then we played uh what an is it deck that kind of got stuck on mana but i mean and then we we also uh we were able to pull it out with some pretty with some pretty clutch uh plays by us and some misplays from our opponent and we had some exciting games and you guys got to see the power of this deck and i am super stoked that we uh built this now again the the venturers i feel like were super busted the um the rampaging frostodons are super busted uh, everything I, I feel like really worked well in the games that we played um, the only cards i feel like that maybe were a little underwhelming were maybe having four copies of the god's willings that could probably be down uh, brought down to like two or three and then maybe the tithe takers i'm i'm really stoked with having the uh you know the array of two drops that we have so i think if we do take out tithe takers um i would only maybe take out one so i, I would probably take out one god's willing one tithe taker and then find another two drop to put. But other than that, I mean, this deck is super powerful. I don't know what two drop I would replace, so we're gonna leave the deck list like this. But I really hope that this is something that you guys would actually uh, try out for yourself. Now, the cool thing about this deck is there's no mythics. Um, everything's rare, so everything, uh, well, not everything's rare, but uh, everything that's not a common or uncommon is a rare, so no mythics. So it's not super expensive to build. Now you do have some cards that are in the um, the anthologies. So again, you would be required to craft those, and that, those being the uh, Hidetsugu Second Right and the Thalia Guardian of Thraben. Um, but other than that, again, you should probably have everything. You'll probably have these because you know people just open these and then just overlook them. People have, everybody's probably already crafted for Bone Crusher Giant because this has been played in like 87,000 decks in standard. And um, every, I, I feel like everybody has everything else. So uh, definitely go and give this deck a shot. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you catch your opponents off guard completely when you just get to deal 10 damage to their face. And it is just, <laughs> it's just a lot of fun to do that. I can't really say anything else. So uh, tell me what you think about this deck in the comments down below. Tell me if you saw anything maybe uh, I should change about this deck, maybe that you like, um, or um, just just anything. Just just let me know what you think about it. Uh, make sure you subscribe as well. Uh, again, always like playing playing Magic for you guys. Um, it's just super fun. This is my favorite game. This is the best game in the world. So I just want to keep doing this for you guys. Um, and please, please, please um, join the Discord. I want to hear from you i want to interact with you i want to get to you know i want to get to know everybody in the community so all right with that being said guys um again enjoy your enjoy your weekend you guys stay safe we will see you guys next time remember this channel would not exist without such amazing viewers and subscribers such as yourselves thank you so much for interacting with the channel and help growing the community and a big special thank you to the new patreons that we have listed here for supporting the channel